friends, I may have stumbled upon the greatest feature of C Sharp since introduction of C Sharp. In fact, a feature that has been lingering around .NET since .NET 1.1, a way that may in fact change how I develop and you develop your applications forever and is something that you've probably been using for a decade plus and never knew. That's right, the conditional attribute in C Sharp that revolutionizes how to conditionally compile code, something that is so fundamental that you use it every time you write debug.writeline. Today, I'm gonna to break down everything about how I stumbled upon the conditional attribute and why I think it is the most amazing thing in the entire world. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James and I'm back with another C-sharp dev tip. Why not jump for joy because Actually, this is the coolest feature in C Sharp since I've been using C Sharp forever until the next feature of C Sharp because every feature of C Sharp is absolutely amazing, which is the ability to conditionally compile your methods. Not conditionally compile code, even though you are, you would think that you would have to if def code to conditionally compile it, but nay, you can actually use a C Sharp attribute on any method to automatically control the compilation of that method. I stumbled upon this because my me and my good friend Frank Kruger were recording an episode of our podcast that comes out every week on Monday, Merge Conflict, mergeconflict.fm. Go to your podcast app, type in Merge Conflict. It's us every single Monday. And I was just sitting there. I was like, Frank, I'm pretty sure debug.writeline only writes to the debug log in debug, right? And he said, yeah, go to source, bro. And I was like, okay, right click on this thing, debug.writeline, let me go to definition. Here it is, and what is this? Conditional debug. That's right, an attribute that you can add to any void method that enables you to do conditional compilation, not just for debug, but for any condition. What we see here is that console.writeline, if I actually go to the definition here on right line, there's nothing here. There's no conditions here. There's this method attribute here, but there is no condition. It will always get output to the console. Debug.writeline, on the other hand, writes to the debug log only when debugging. So what that means is if I'm in debug mode and I debug my application, bah, 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 and I see it here, it's actually gonna say, hello world. If I go to view output, what we're gonna see is this is debug. Let me see if I can make that bigger. Nope, I can't. So I'll zoom in over here, this is debug. Now, if I go over here, clear this out, toggle it over to release and run the application again, Right, it's not in debug mode, so let's continue here. What we can see is that we get no, this is debug because I'm in release. If I run it just magically over here without anything, we're gonna get the same exact method calls that we would expect, right? We would expect that we're seeing this is hello world, no, this is debug, anything like that. Amazing. Now, when you go in to your project settings, you can define these compilation symbols. That's what we're seeing right here. And by default, a debug and release are automatically defined. Additionally, we have a net six, a net core app, and so many more inside of here. So we can define these things automatically. Now we can also define those automatically inside of our source code. So if I come in here and I was to type in some code, a method one and a method two, what we can do is add in conditions. Here's condition one, Here's condition one, condition two. Now this is really cool because this is saying if condition one or condition two, then it's defined, so call this method. Now I can go into my console, I could write them in here, or I could come in and do pound define and say condition one, just like that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna say uh, method one method two. Now in this case, 
what we're going to expect that happens here, let's go to define an integer. There we go. What we're going to expect to have happen here is that method one and method two get called. So let's debug it and continue on. We're in release mode. So we see hello world condition one, condition one or condition two. That's pretty rad. Now, if I come in and say only define condition two and run this again, let's go ahead and close down these and run it again. There we go. Sure enough, hello world is defined over here, but that first method is not called at all. Only this one here for condition one or condition two. So this method exists, but it's going to get compiled out because there is no condition that is met in my code. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is if you are writing applications and you need to have debug release, you need to maybe have different sort of configurations for maybe your QA for your test department, you can define these different methods. So you never have to write if def ever again. That's right. Never write if def ever again, you can define these attributes better yet. You can use these with predefined conditions inside of cross platform apps, for example, with .NET MAUI. So check this out. If I go ahead and open up visual studio, I have a .NET MAUI application that's going to target iOS, Android, Mac, and windows. Now, if I come into this code and say, uh, if I can say Android, I can say windows, I can say iOS, I can say Mac catalyst. I have all of those conditions available to me. Now here's, what's cool. The default application with Don Maui goes ahead and it increments a counter, good old counter application. Now what's cool here is I've added an add windows and an add Android method down here. I'm going to add a conditional for windows. That's going to add five and a conditional for Android that adds 10. So if this is working and in my mind, if everything is a perfect system where this conditional works, we should see only the addition of five every time because the add Android will be conditionally compiled out of my application. So let's go ahead and bring it over. There it is. Click, 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 click incremented by five every time. That's right. No more if defs ever, if you don't need them, you can use the conditional attribute inside of your methods, inside of your .NET applications with C sharp. I think that this may revolutionize how I build my applications because I'm doing a lot of logging. I'm doing a lot of different platform specific code. And in this system, I want to have the method available to me. So I don't have to write that if def around it. And yet when I go and I call the method, it will automatically know based on if the conditions are met, whether to execute that code or not. I love this feature. Maybe you've known about this feature for the last 15, 20 plus years. I haven't. If you have, let me know in the comments below. If you didn't also let me know in the comments below, I want to know what you think of this really cool attribute and how you may use it in your applications. And if you're a library developer, this also may revolutionize how you specifically are writing your libraries. Now, let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, let me know in the show notes below. And I will additionally link to the documentation that outlines every single piece around the conditional attribute. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you jam uh, that like button. And of course hit subscribe because I put up videos every single week right here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching.